Okay, ladies, it is time for the evening's feature show, presenting Polly Sanders. Um, I've known Polly her whole life. I don't know if that's fortunate for her or for me, um, but I've seen Polly go through the different stages of life and actually had the pleasure of traveling to Thailand with her like six years ago, and then I remembered why I liked her again. Um, I think there was a moment where you, like, you sang and I was doing some weird interpretive dance, and there's a picture somewhere of me like... Um, but Polly's a lot of fun. I'm super excited to hear this. I think this is the first time she's ever done stand-up. I know there are people in this room that saw a preview. They say it's fabulous. Um, if you hate it, laugh anyway. <laughs> I will find you. She is my family. No, I, it's going to be great. You guys aren't going to have any trouble laughing. So, Polly, come on up here. Entertain us. Hello. Happy Mom's Night Out. You guys are out. That's a really big deal to be out. I feel like we have to re-socialize, you know, a little bit. Yeah. No, I love what we do here at Hickory Ridge. I love how we um, acknowledge that motherhood looks different, like Sonia was saying earlier. Um, the whole 16-year-olds and up joining us for all of our Mother's Day shenanigans. I love that. Um, I remember when I was 16, and I had all these visions and fantasies of the future of motherhood, what it would look like. Just, you know, these beautiful dreams I had. And, like, for instance, I would think about, like, the mornings, you know, when you wake up with your kids in the mornings. So magical. <laughs> and glorious. Oh, I just pictured it, you know, I'm downstairs, I'm like, whoop, I hear him chirping. <laughs> better get up there, you know, go in their room. I picture like maybe two kids, one on each side, walk in. They're just beaming at me, you know, go up to their window and just throw open the drapes and the morning light just beams in. And I just start spinning in the morning light, like Maria and the sound of music, you know, maybe start singing a worship song. And my toddlers who are probably already saved, just raise their little hands, <laughs> start worshiping with me. And I'm like, good morning, children, because in the future I'd be British. <laughs> and I'm like, it's another glorious day. <laughs> Mummy's been awake for hours preparing for you a delicious hot breakfast. <laughs> I've also run five miles, <laughs> read half of my Bible, and connected with a friend. <laughs> It's going to be a wonderful day. Let's go downstairs and get our breakfast. We all just get, you know, go downstairs together. It's just wonderful, cozy. Mm. And then, of course, I had kids. <laughs> and it could be glorious. It could be magical. There's mornings where, sure, it kind of is. But I'm not really a morning person, so it's hard for me to kind of bring the magic like that. I'm not Mary Poppins, you know. So I try, but it doesn't always happen. And it's usually more like, if you do not stop whining, mommy is going to eat all your breakfast. <laughs> Just stop whining, please. And I know you're thinking, you know, don't give your kids empty threats. <laughs> it's not an empty threat. <laughs> if I don't eat their breakfast, I probably won't eat. So it's working out fine. I'm like, I'm, you know, whipping up the pancake batter. I'm like, just keep whining. Come on, mommy's hungry. Just keep it up. The menu's just getting bigger and bigger for mommy. Let's go. They whine so much, it's becoming a problem. I need to change my techniques. I really do. No. Motherhood is amazing. I would not trade it for anything. It really is incredible. And there's more pros to being a mom than just raising amazing humans or having little people adore you no matter what you do, you know? They're really, like, first, um, there's the whole mom brain card you get to pull now, right? You know? Leaving the grocery store. Yeah. They're like, oh, ma'am, you forgot to pay for your groceries. I'm sorry. <laughs> mom brain. Am I right? <laughs> Here's my cash. I'm sorry about that. All right. I'll see you later. Ma'am, you forgot to take your groceries. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Mom brain. <laughs> Am I right? To the whole line behind me, the person in the back. Am I right? Mom brain, right? I'll take them. Sorry. Sorry. You know. Uh, ma'am, you left your gas pump in your car, and you were about to drive away. Mom brain today. Uh, 
so embarrassing. Okay. That's a one-way street. Mom brain, sorry. I don't know. <laughs> Ma'am, do you know why I pulled you over? <sighs> Was it for having mom brain? <laughs> so I can think of, officer. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, there are definitely lots of pros to that, you know. And, you know, I feel like we also, we have this, like, ongoing list of things that we, you know, we're never going to do. I'm not going to do that when I'm a mom, you know, and we're all doing it, right? One of mine was, I'm not going to do the whole first and middle name thing when my kids are in trouble. Like, what's the deal with that? I'm not going to do that. Of course I'm doing that. (laughs) Guys, the middle name holds so much more weight and conviction in it, you know? It's like anointed. I don't know. There's just something about it. And I look back, and I'm like, it really did. My mom would be like, Polly. I'd be like, yes, do you have a question? And she's like, Polly and Melinda. I'm like, what do you know? What do they do? Like, (laughs) what, what have you discovered? Like, you know, and with my kids, it's true. You know, I have a one-year-old her name is Anna. Anna Lynn is her full name. And I'll be like, Anna. And she'll just keep sharpieing up that couch. <laughs> and I go, Anna Lynn. And she stops and she looks at me. I turn to my husband, Skip, and I'm like, you see that? <laughs> Middle name. <laughs> works every time. <laughs> you know, I'm definitely doing that because it works. It really does. And then we have these things that uh, we didn't know we would do. We didn't know, I didn't even think about it, you know? You know, they say, when you become a mom, don't let yourself go. (laughs) Too late. (laughs) It's happening. It's happening. Is anybody in here familiar with the people of Walmart? Anybody know what I'm talking about? (laughs) Can I say that? Okay. I have this fear of becoming one. Um... If you're not sure what I'm talking about, basically, Walmart has built up this reputation for attracting a come-as-you-are crowd. (laughs) And uh, images have been snapped and posted online of these people. It's very fun to look up and just be careful. Like, I wouldn't go Googling it. Like, what you see, you can't unsee. Like, it's very, you know. Anyway, my, my fear now, I used to just laugh at it before I was a mom. And never once did it enter my mind, oh, they must have toddlers. That's why they look like that. Um, and now I have sympathy for them. I'm, like, making excuses for them as to why, you know. For instance, this lady, she was just trying to take a shower. <laughs> And she couldn't finish. She couldn't finish. I mean, when's the last time anyone here actually finished a shower or took one? Do not answer that question. We don't need to know. But seriously, she's just trying to take a shower. Or this, you know. (laughs) It's to the point. You have to mix me time with Walmart. You just, you have to now. Or this one. Yeah. I'm pretty sure this was like a COVID mask that was happening. But, or just couldn't get the makeup done, you know. Or this one. Yeah. (laughs) Two words. Laundry day. (laughs) Right? Am I right? Am I the only one? Awkward. Okay, moving on. Things all happen to us. All right, this guy definitely has kids. Definitely has kids. Okay, if I could just get that, but from like head to toe, just a little bit every day, just have some social distancing (laughs) with my children. He probably had that already before COVID because of his kids and just pulled it out, you know, or this. So, you know, brand names are getting harder and harder to buy. Kids are expensive. So just tape it on your shoe. I'm almost to this point, you know, it's desperation or this. Okay. This mom knows what she's doing. She's like, I'm done. You are pushing me. I am not pushing you. I pushed you out. You pushed me in the cart. Yeah, Haven can almost reach the handle. So we're almost there. (laughs) We're almost there. Or this. If this isn't a parent who needed a minute, I don't know what is. Plus, the meat's so expensive, you might as well sleep in it. Because he can't buy it, so take a nap in it, you know. Now, I am just, I'm so glad that I have not been caught yet at Walmart in my garb. I'm like stealth ninja. Like, I just, I sneak in, I sneak out, and the day those pictures are actually, like, taken and shown will be a disaster of a day. I, I'm, so, so far I'm pretty proud of myself for getting in and out pretty quick. It's hard, but I managed, you know. But seriously, getting, getting ready in, you know, before you leave the house, it's just, it's just getting harder and harder, you know. Like, like wearing jeans is a big deal now, right? Putting on jeans is a big deal. And my kids know. 
I put jeans on and my three-year-old is like, where are we going? <laughs> is someone coming to watch us? Are you going to church, a wedding, a ball? What's happening? <laughs> my one-year-old who can barely talk is bringing me her shoes. She's like, bye-bye, bye-bye. <laughs> and I'm like, guys, settle down. I know mommy looks a little fancy. <laughs> But it just so happens to be mommy and daddy's anniversary today. So mommy's just dressing up a little. Why do you think mommy's hair is in a ponytail and not a messy bun today? You know? And then Skip, my husband, comes home and, and I'm like, so, <laughs> do you notice anything different about me? He's like, uh, jeans. I put jeans on. Happy anniversary. Why do I even try anymore? <laughs> Done. Seriously. Props to my mom's generation. You know, jeans are like sweatpants to them. Yeah, it's like a step up. What I call a dressy shirt, my mom would call, oh, save that for later. I can make it into a rag. <laughs> and she's not being mean. Like, she's, she's serious. She would take my shirts and be like, this is really good material. <laughs> this really gets the streaks out of windows. <laughs> this is good. And I'm standing there just like, Okay, well, I was going to wear that to church tomorrow, but <laughs> by all means, clean your window with it. I'll just go to Walmart and get another one. <laughs> it was starting back then, the whole Walmart thing, you know, things we never knew we'd do. And then there's these things that we try to do, but they're not realistic. Like, <gasps> my kids are playing nicely. I'm just going to grab a cup of coffee and sit down. And all the seasoned moms are like, classic mistake. Your coffee will be cold for hours. Don't do it. And to add to it, I'm going to read my Bible. Yeah, right. Okay. All right. Here we go. Cozy moment. Kids are playing in front of me. I got my coffee, my Bible. Sit down. Smell it. Oh, okay. So ready. They're just angels right now. This is amazing. Okay. Turn to my Psalms. Oh, the heavens declare the glory of God. Anna, put that down. Do not put that in your mouth. That is not food. That is food. That's old food. Put it back under the table where mommy keeps it. Do not put it in your mouth. Thank you for obeying. Okay. Night after night, they pour forth haven. Stop rocking. Do not rock back and forth and just go potty. You're going to have an accident. Okay? Just, just go. No, not in the sink. Go to the bathroom. <sighs> Thank you for obeying. Good. Night after night, they pour forth speech. Anna, do not take off your diaper. Honey, I know you want to be like your big sister. She's on the potty. You will soon. Just keep it on. Please just, oh my word, there's poop in your diaper. Do not, do not take it off. Do not throw it. Oh, oh my word, she threw it. She threw it. There's poop everywhere. It's on me. It's on the Bible. It's everywhere. It's probably in my coffee. <sighs> God, I'm going to have to meet you back here in a minute. Um, I just have to literally go anoint everything with oil. <laughs> I'll be back. I'll be back. You know, things just, they're not realistic anymore, but we think they are. And I know some of you are like, well, if you just get up before your kids and have your devotions. <laughs> Thank you. I had no idea. <laughs> Thank you for that advice. So helpful. Once in a while, like, look, if I could just do two things every day before my kids wake up, devotions work out, I would feel like my whole day is just complete, successful, like, let's go. But it just doesn't always happen. And I'll get on these kicks. I'll be like, Skip, my husband, okay, you're going to be, you're going to be my accountability. <laughs> you're going to get me out of bed every morning and help me have my devotions and go work out. You're, it'll be great for our marriage if you do that. And really good for our relationship, if you're the one doing that. That'll be good. Right. And then 6 a.m. rolls around, and he's like, hey, honey, are you going to go? Are you going to get up, and you're going to go work out and have your devotions? Are you going to go do that? And the only way I can describe what happens next is, <laughs> have you ever seen, like, a sci-fi fantasy movie where the camera, like, zooms into the dragon's eye right before it opens? <laughs> and the scary music plays... Literally, like, I'm like, if you do not move away from my face in five seconds, you will die. I cannot be held responsible. Just move away. And he does. So I've come to find I need to be responsible for myself. It's just better for everyone. Not putting him in that death position. I just need to figure it out. You know, but there was a time where uh, I didn't know if I'd ever have a conversation like that with, with my husband, you know. I didn't know if I'd ever get married. Uh, I wasn't allowed to date in high school. Yes, feel sorry for me. It's fine. Um, 
but I actually was really weird about it. I, got, I was kind of proud of it. You know? you know those annoying people on Facebook that like change their relationship status to in a relationship with Jesus? <laughs> I was that girl. I was that annoying, annoying girl. And um, yeah, I was like proud of it. A guy would look at me, but he's actually looking behind me at his friend, and I'm like, no, sir. <laughs> I'm dating Jesus. <laughs> and he would walk past me to the friend, yeah, you better keep walking. That's right, get on out of here. <laughs> oh, man. A guy would cough in my direction and be like, oh, no way. You keep your coughs to yourself. I'm dating Jesus. <laughs> you know, he walks away. I'm like, man. The vultures around here. Can a girl just live her life? <laughs> just try to, you know, walk this out, man. Of course, then I, uh, I graduate high school, and I'm allowed to date. And I'm like, here I am. <laughs> I'm ready. Where is everybody? <laughs> There's no one here? Everyone's gone? Okay. There's nobody? Okay. That's great. That's fun. Once in a while, I'd have a friend. They'd be like, hey, I know this guy. I think you might hit it off with. I'd be like, you know, because I'm so weird. I have no idea how this works. I'm like, oh, well, really? Uh, I guess, okay, I guess he's my boyfriend now, right? <laughs> Is that how that works? I guess I'll, I'll just go change my relationship status. God, you understand. You're still my first love, but they think I might hit it off with this guy. So I'm going to go, you know, see if I will. Never worked out. Not great. And then I... Um, I decided to go to a ministry school for three years, um, willingly knowing that they have a no dating students policy. So I'm like extending the wait time, you know, intentionally. But of course, I go the whole three years I'm there. I'm just like, where is he? I can't find him. Why? Because you signed a thing that said you wouldn't for three years, you weirdo. And I'm still like whining about it. It's ridiculous. So there's this eight-year period between graduating high school, being allowed to date, and actually meeting my husband, Skip, you know. And uh, four years into that, that's like a year after I got home from that school, I remember just trying to come up with any reason as to why this is not happening. I'm just like, oh, God's just really working on him. He needs to be perfected because that's what I deserve. So the longer it takes, the better he'll be. <laughs> Yeah, and this isn't true for everyone, but it was definitely true for me. Then I realized, oh, it's me. Okay, hi, I'm the problem, it's me. <laughs> yeah. And I realized, you know, looking for the guy, waiting for him. If I would have changed that and actually focus on becoming someone that someone's waiting for, it was a lot better, you know. little plug out there for the 16-year-olds and anyone in the waiting season. It makes it go by just a little faster and... You know, not as miserable. But uh, props to Roxy Heatwall's husband, Dave. Roxy, where are you? Give it up for Dave Heatwall because, yeah, he introduced me and Skip, actually. They went to UD together. And um, I think he was just like, well, they're both really weird. I think this just might work. <laughs> Their kids are doomed, but I think their marriage might be okay. Yeah, let's do this, you know. So we were really thankful for him. Yeah, so... Well, this is awkward. I don't remember what the next thing is I was going to say. It's probably why this event was free. <laughs> well, mom brain. Just kidding. <laughs> That's my time. Thank you, guys. Happy Mother's Day.